Season's greetings. I'm Dr. Pauline Mackay from the University of Glasgow's Centre for Robert Burns Studies. And it's my pleasure to help see out 2021, another successful year for TAMFEST, with a reading from my book, Burns for Every Day of the Year. Now, I'd like to begin with a reading from the introduction because when I was writing this, it was important to me to capture some of the complexity of Burns as I think this encourages people to anticipate and embrace the variety of poetry, song and prose that we encounter when we're reading or listening to Burns' work. Robert Burns is the Scottish National Bard and one of the world's most famous poets and songwriters. He was born in Alloway, Ayrshire on the 25th of January, 1759. And since his death in Dumfries on the 21st of July, 1796, he has become the most commemorated of all authors. After all, what other cultural figure has a night every year dedicated to the celebration of their life and works? In a ritual that began early in the 19th century on the 25th of January, the bard is exuberantly toasted at Burns suppers in every corner of the globe from Scotland to Australia, and from China to the United States. Burns led a colourful, if tragically short, life. Ultimately, Burns was a lover and a weaver, a brother and a friend, a husband and a father, a pleasure seeker and a labourer. He was a sincerely religious man, albeit one with a scathing satirical bent and an intolerance for religious hypocrisy. From his writing, we might derive his broad support for Jacobitism and Republicanism, if reined in at times owing to his employment as a government excise officer in the last seven years of his life. As a ploughman, Burns was no stranger to the earthly turning of the seasons, hard labour or financial penury. But he also enjoyed a taste of the finer things in life when following the success of the Kilmarnock edition of poems chiefly in the Scottish dialect in 1786, he spent a short time as the toast of Edinburgh High Society and made several tours or pilgrimages across Scotland and the north of England. The eminently clubbable bard reveled in the company of his male cronies. In particular, in the fraternity of the Freemasons, the enlightened debate of the Turbolton Bachelors Club, and in the composition of body verse for the entertainment of his convivial comrades, the Crocal and Fencibles. A remarkable poet and a herald of the Romantic era, Burns was also perhaps the world's best composer of love songs, and it is to him that we owe the exquisite lyrics of A Fond Kiss and oh my loves like a red, red rose. So given the, the volume and the variety of Burns's writing, it's little wonder that there really is something in Burns for everyone, for every day of the year and for more or less every occasion. However, one of our biggest annual celebrations in the 21st century required quite careful consideration on my part, and that was Christmas Day. Here's why. On Christmas Day, Christians mark the birth of Jesus Christ, Son of God. In the 21st century, this wintertime festival is celebrated with special religious services, an international holiday, by the giving of gifts, and through the sharing of food and drink in convivial merriments. However, in the 18th century, Christmas was not celebrated to nearly the same extent. In fact, following the Scottish Reformation, when Scotland severed ties with the Roman Catholic Church and established a Protestant, predominantly Calvinist kirk, Christmas celebrations were discouraged. An act discharging the Yule Vacans passed in 1640, declared that the kirk within this kingdom is now purged of all superstitious observation of days. 
It is perhaps unsurprising then that Burns makes no mention of Christmas in his poetry or correspondence and only a handful of fleeting references to Yule. He did, however, express profound belief in Jesus Christ and the Bard's prayer to Christ in the selection for Christmas Day emphasises togetherness and aspires to a better world making it entirely appropriate for a day that has become synonymous with peace and joy. And here are Burns' words written to Francis Dunlop in December 1789. Jesus Christ, thou amiablest of characters, I trust thou art no imposter and that thy revelation of blissful scenes of existence beyond death and the grave is not one of the many impositions which time after time have been panned on credulous mankind. I trust that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed by being yet connected together in a better world, where every tie that bound heart to heart in this state of existence shall be, far beyond our present conceptions, more endearing. So if Christmas required some thought on my part, selecting works to mark the turn of the year was actually very straightforward because it's a time of year that saw Burns deep in thought, reflecting on the past, looking to the future and inspired to muse on paper. So, here is an entry on Burns's New Year in 1789, when he composed Sketch New Year's Day to Mrs Dunlop. On New Year's Day in 1789, Burns sent the following verses to a valued and trusted friend, Mrs Frances Anna Dunlop. Many of us reach out to a particular friend or family member at the turn of the year, and for Burns, Frances Dunlop, his honoured first of friends, was that person. Burns wrote more letters to Francis Dunlop than to any other correspondent. She was significantly older than the poet and the source of much advice, both solicited and unsolicited. In fact, Francis thought her age and status qualified her to comment on everything from Burns's poetry to his love life. She wrote to Burns, I've been told that Voltaire read all his manuscripts to an old woman and printed nothing but what she would have approved. I wish you would name me to her office. Although Burns sincerely respected Frances, he did not always take her advice or honour her suggestions, sometimes to her obvious displeasure. In the poem, Burns recognises that time is both fixed and inescapable. He invites his friend to pause with him for a moment, to take some time away from the daily goings on of family life and to consider the value of reflecting upon the past year. Burns ponders the uncertainty of the future in life and beyond. And he encourages his friend to embrace the present and live as those who never die. In casting his mind back and forward, Burns captures the essence of the month of January, so named after Janus, the two-faced Roman god of beginnings and endings. And here is sketch New Year's Day. First, what did yesternight deliver? Another year is gone forever. And what is this day's strong suggestion? The passing moments all we rest on. Rest on? For what? What do we hear? Or why regard the passing year? Will time, amused with proverb lore, add to our date one minute more? A few days may, a few years must, repose us in the silent dust. Then is it wise to damp our bliss? Yes, all such reasonings are amiss. The voice of nature loudly cries and many a message from the skies that something in us never dies, that on his frail, uncertain state hung matters of eternal weight, that future life in worlds unknown must take its hue from this alone, whether his heavenly glory bright 
or dark as misery's woeful night. Since then, my honoured first of friends, on this poor being all depends. Let us the important now employ and live as those who never die. Though you with days and honours crowned witness that filial circle round, a sight life's sorrows to repulse, a sight pale envy to convulse. Others now claim your chief regard, yourself you wait your bright reward. We might gather from this that time is something that Burns is concerned with. It's something that he ponders often. And actually we see this in Tam O'Shanter, that great narrative poem that inspired Tam Fest, where Burns writes, Nay man can tether time or tide. Now, I'd like to turn your attention to that great global celebration, rich in Scottish tradition and associations, Hug Money. There could only be one way to finish Burns for every day of the year or any year for that matter. And it is of course, with Auld Lang Syne. Wherever you are in the world, the likelihood is that when the clock strikes midnight, the notes and sentiments of Auld Lang Syne will ring out to welcome in the new year. Burns's version of this traditional Scottish song has become one of the world's most famous instantly recognisable songs. Every now and it rightfully enjoys as a consequence of its universally felt sentiments of memory, friendship, and kindness. Hugmanay, or New Year's Eve, has always been an important occasion in Scotland, marked with its own distinct rituals. After midnight, the tradition of first footing will commence. This is when the first person to cross the threshold of a home, ideally a tall, dark stranger, or at the very least someone who wasn't present before midnight, brings with them luck for the new year and a symbolic gift. Traditionally, these might be a black bun, a rich fruitcake, a dram of whiskey, some shortbread or a lump of coal, signifying warmth for the year ahead. With their ancient meaningful roots, these Scottish traditions are now practised on an international scale. And indeed, Scotland and Scotland's National Bard have become synonymous with this special time of year, to the extent that in the 21st century, people from all over the world hope to visit Scotland to take part in our Hugmanay festivities. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind, should old acquaintance be forgot and old lang syne. For old lang syne, my jewel, for old lang syne, we'll tack a cup of kindness yet for all lang syne. Now I'm no singer so I'm going to spare you my rendition of all lang syne and the trust that you'll enjoy your own song in just a few short days. Instead I'd like to leave you with Burns's words to his friend Mitchell, a fellow excise man, composed on Hugmanay Eve in 1795. So may the old year gang out moaning to see the new come, laden, groaning, with double plenty o'er the loaning to thee and thine, domestic peace and comforts crowning, the hail design. So if you would like to begin a journey with Burns in 2022, Burns for Every Day of the Year and indeed a diary version, Burns for Every Week of the Year, is available now from Black and White Publishing, Amazon and many good bookshops. But all that remains for me to say is a good new year to you and yours. Mm -hmm.